can now take us to Egypt with Ain Shams University. Samar. Yes, hello, hello. Thank you so much for this opportunity. And uh, thank you for all the universities that have presented uh, before us. Uh, you gave us great ideas and insight into your work and hopefully we can give you a little bit of insight into ours as well. Um, uh, I just want to comment, start by commending the people on this call from the team. We have many of them uh, attending, including our beloved Vice Dean for um, uh, Community Affairs, who is with us on the call, and the rest of the team who are all uh, managers and um, um, leaders in uh, their own sectors uh, that collectively contribute to the, um, uh, the functions of Vainchamps University. Let me just tell you first that when we applied uh, for this uh, opportunity, we applied for ISAT as, the, as a health sector. So we did not apply as a medical school, we applied actually as a, a collective sector of four independent schools uh, that collectively um, uh, create what we call the health sector, the, uh, the uh, health professions sector of our school. Next slide, please. So in short, we are four schools. We are the School of Medicine, School of Pharmacy, the School of Dentistry, and the School of Nursing. And just uh, a flashback on what this university is and um, why we applied as a health sector. Um, well, Ayn Shams University is a massive school. It's one of the oldest schools in the region. Uh, we are almost 100 years old. And um, uh, we are one of the most, um, the largest schools in terms of acceptance of numbers of students. So uh, when you look at the number of our students and the number of our faculty board, you will see that we are a humongous school. We, we cannot be compared to many of the schools in the region. Uh, and so we are applying basically as a sector, which is a sector that represents part, a very big part of the health sector in Egypt. So um, uh, we, we thought that we would take this experience uh, a little, uh, a step further and uh, take a, a bird eye view on what we will call a, um, a, a good sector of the health service that is offered to uh, the Egyptian uh, population. Uh, Ayn Shams University is the second largest school in Egypt and the second largest school in the region. Um, uh, next slide, please. And in numbers. We have 11,000 employees. We have uh, around 200,000 students. Uh, we have um, um, a huge number of blended learning students, 1,200, around uh, 1.2K international faculty. Um, uh, Postgraduate students, we are talking about something um, uh, near to 200, 20,000 um, uh, uh, postgraduate students, and we have like 7,000 international students. And when we say international students, we, um, we tend to make sure that we have a good representation of the bo uh, body of international students that we receive. With us on the call, we have uh, Professor Nayera, who is responsible for managing our international student body. And um, uh, we do have a plan for recruitment of international students so that we uh, have a, um, a good coverage of the underserved populations, the underserved areas around us. We consider Anshams University as uh, a lighthouse for education for Africa. Um, uh, and our collaborative efforts are uh, always directed towards Africa as well as they are directed, to, directed towards uh, Europe and the Americas. So we have, we have it in our mission. And when we say that we identify our uh, catchment area, Africa becomes one of our ca catchment areas, especially um, uh, the, um, the area above Central Africa, which are um, uh, usually, uh, you will find that a great deal of our international body of students comes from this area. Next slide, please. So this is how we evaluated ourselves, and when we, um, you will see that um, in most of the um, of the areas of the evaluation or most of the sections, uh, we we lie in phase three and sometimes in phase four, and you you might um, uh, get the sense that uh, this is. Um, um, uh, 
an overestimation, but actually it's not because we are looking at ourselves as a sector that is offering um, uh, collaborative and complementary efforts uh, in the area of health service. Um, there are areas in, um, in our evaluation uh, in the ISAT uh, tool, which was, by the way, very helpful. It was a, a very helpful and eye-opening experience for all of us. And it helped us curate and accumulate all the, uh, not all, of course, but many of the initiatives that are being carried out in the university. When you're managing a huge establishment like HMS University, it becomes very difficult for you to understand, to capture all the essence of everything that is going around, uh, going on everywhere. So it is um, uh, ideas and concepts and experimentations like this that actually open your eyes towards practices that are happening inside the university in different areas. Uh, when we went about um, uh, managing our indicators, um, we did it in, a, in the most scientific way that we could. Uh, we designed teams that were responsible for each of these uh, um, uh, evaluation areas. Each of these teams had um, a, a proper hierarchy with uh, a specific person responsible for um, uh, getting, uh, capturing all the evidence in that specific area. We created what we call a uh, Google Drive for people to upload their evidence. And um, I am sure that um, uh, when our application was uh, looked at, uh, you, you would have seen the amount of evidence that was uploaded there. And I really want to thank the team for this, um, uh, for this effort that was done. Uh, also, we generated a, um, a Google uh, form uh, where we uh, did uh, use this form to capture information and data that is um, uh, well established and it is um, uh, documented. This data, this form was a kind of outreach for our stakeholders and internal and external stakeholders. What we did is we took the indicators for each of these evaluation areas and we created a questionnaire related to these indicators. We uh, te pilot tested it first and then uh, we took it, we threw it out there for everyone to put in their evidence. Uh, this questionnaire or survey, it was handled by each of the four schools independently. And uh, we created a code for introduction of the data and introduction of uh, the, um, uh, the attachments. Uh, so each school would uh, identify their attachments uh, named by their school and titled by the domain area where they uploaded uh, the evidence. Um, uh, part of our evaluation um, uh, of these uh, and the indicators, of course, that we, uh, that we came across while doing this exercise identified areas that needed a little bit more work uh, from us, given the fact that the school is really huge and that its impact should be as huge as the size of the school. So we identified that we have a, a little bit of a gap when it comes to our societal impact. Despite the fact that Ain Shams University has led over the past 100 years, um, uh, the, the change in um, mentalities of uh, its catchment area, yet we are not a community-based school at all. We are community-oriented and our, we can claim that our program, uh, our programs and our um, uh, teaching methods as well as our research is totally directed by the needs of the community around us. And this is done cyclic and in a very scientific and well-established methodology that has been instilled in us by our continuous rounds of accreditation and re-accreditation. And this maybe highlights the importance of going through processes, evaluation processes like these, because in addition to understanding what goes on in the university, it also helps in establishing methodologies for continuous evaluation and improvement. And this is exactly what has happened with Ainshams University. Next slide, please. And we'll have to, you'll have to conclude, Samar, just because we're very close to time. Doing my best. So what we did is that uh, we, uh, we have a very uh, uh, well-established methodology for stakeholder engagement. We do have a very well mapped out stakeholder um, uh, map uh, that the university is working on 
continuously, adapting continuously, revising continuously, and it goes directly, it feeds directly into the strategic plan of the uh, university, which later on is translated into uh, separate strategic plans of the uh, uh, independent faculties. Next slide, please. We have established, um, uh, identified a few points that um, we need to be working on um, uh, in the future. Part of these are uh, that the, the, the university needs to renew and revise the policies for uh, admission of uh, students. We do have um, a specified uh, admission policies for independent programs like the parallel paid programs in Ain Shams University. These have their own uh, admission criteria, uh, but as we have heard from all the other universities, we as well have a country-wide uh, policy that we are uh, abiding to. And within the scope of this policy, we are trying to introduce a little bit of acceptance and admission criteria that create, um, uh, that uh, speak to our contract for social accountability. Uh, these are parts of the, uh, as you can see on the screen, parts of the plans uh, that we have uh, established and put into uh, uh, action. Uh, what also we, I will not speak about them specifically, but we need to uh, focus on making sure that our plans for improvement of uh, our uh, social accountability status and our commitment to social accountability are more uh, focused and they are more uh, set into action uh, mode. So while we do have um, uh, of uh, that we are working on, uh, more effort needs to be put into putting these plans into action in the future. So thank you, Samar.